Hi everyone and welcome back to Tomes and Travel. Today I'm here with a non-spoiler book review on The Wise Man's Sphere by Patrick Rothfuss, which is the second book in the King Killer Chronicles, the first book being The Name of the Wind. So if you're not familiar with the King Killer Chronicle, it is a high fantasy series dealing with the main character Quoth, who in the present day is a fairly depressed innkeeper at the Waystone Inn, and he's telling his life story to a man called Chronicler. Chronicler's job is to write down everything that Quoth is saying in order to produce a kind of biography on his life. Quoth is particularly famous for being an adventurer who's travelled across many different lands and come into contact with many different cultures. He's also famous for being an incredibly talented musician who has a passion for lyrical songwriting. Over the years Quoth has developed quite a legendary reputation and status and there are a lot of different accounts about his life, lots of different people saying what he's done and what he hasn't done, but nobody really knows the truth. So Quoth is finally here now talking to Chronicler and giving his own version of events. In the first book, The Name of the Wind, we learn that Quoth is from the Ademaru, which is basically like a travelling group of performers. He had a particularly tragic childhood, living for a few years as an orphan on the streets of a place called Tarbian. He always believed that he was destined for bigger and better things and eventually worked his way up to get a place at the university which teaches magic but it's not like Harry Potter magic it's much more logical much more scientific in this second book for the first 300 400 pages we learn a little bit more about his time at the university before he goes off on some epic adventures he carries out a lot of quests on behalf of important people and goes to places such as Vintus which is an old and wealthy kingdom full of people who are suspicious of anything to do with magic and then he also enters into the realm of the Fae which is like a parallel universe full of supernatural creatures. These creatures can move between their world and the mortal world whenever the moon is full. Quoth is basically telling Chronicler about these kind of interactions that he's had and trying to set the record straight. The first thing I want to talk about is the writing and in particular the narrative perspective. As I said, it's told from Quoth's perspective as he is talking to Chronicler. Because there are so many different accounts on what Quoth has done, I really appreciated being able to hear things from his voice. I felt like it was authentic, I felt like it was genuine, and he definitely is interested in the idea of truthfulness. At one point he says that many of the stories centred around me hunting bandits and rescuing young girls, but none of them came terribly close to the truth. No story can move a thousand miles by word of mouth and keep its shape. So he's definitely aware of the way that his reputation and image have developed over the time and the way that his identity is constructed. And then because of this he says, I'm giving you my story with all the grubby truths intact. All my mistakes and idiocies laid out naked in the light. This means that he's able to dispel some of the mythology that's been built up around him and although Quoth shows himself to be incredibly intelligent when he's at the university, he also doesn't hold back from showing his vulnerability, from showing his hesitation, from showing his mistakes and his naivety. Particularly when he's dealing with some of the female characters, I feel like he is quite naive. He definitely shows his age as a teenager, a little bit misogynistic and sexist at times. I like the fact that he is not perfect. I think a flawed character is a believable character. Some of the qualities that he has are not necessarily always admirable, but I feel like it's real and I feel like it's raw. Obviously because he's telling his own story, sometimes the narration is a little bit biased, sometimes it's a bit unreliable, and I feel like he definitely exaggerates and embellishes certain scenes for entertainment purposes. After all, Quoth is a songwriter, he's a performer, he knows how words are used for certain effects, he definitely makes the most of his language and he is an excellent storyteller. Not always reliable, but as I said, real and raw. Let's talk a little bit now about what Quoth actually gets up to in the main part of the story. So as I said, it carries off after the first book with Quoth at the university taking some admissions tests and these determine how much his tuition fees will be. And this part was really relatable. I think definitely as someone who's recently been to university and graduated, I was at university for four years and I could just relate to Quoth, I could empathise with his struggles. Even though it's a fantasy world, I feel like a lot of real life issues are woven into the story. So particularly the fact that he's from a very poor background and he struggles to pay his tuition fees, Quoth tries to do anything he can to earn a little bit of extra cash on the side 
So sometimes he goes to work in the fishery and then sometimes he has to turn towards money lenders. Although he doesn't necessarily have the financial means off his own back to fund his education, he's passionate about getting that education in whatever way he can. When all the problems are sorted and he finally gets his reading list, he has something like 20 books that he needs to find in a place called the Archives which is a really intricate library system. In my head, it definitely played out like a maze, like a literary labyrinth of all the dusty books and all the old books. I loved this part of the book because he was searching for books. It was bookish. Some of the areas of the library were restricted, so he had to come up with some really interesting and creative ways to get hold of those books. And I found it really entertaining to read. I also felt like the classes that Quove participated in were also equally entertaining to read, particularly Master Elodin's naming class. Classes, which are basically etymology. Master Elodin is this crazy, eccentric, somewhat insane professor, and he has a great dynamic with the students. At the beginning of every class, he asks the students to share an interesting fact about the subject. He always seems like completely unimpressed by what the students are saying, as if he's heard it all before, and I just thought the way he went about running the classes was really humorous and witty. The university part of the book also introduces us to some really interesting side characters, such as Ambrose, who sadly isn't featured too much in this particular book. He's basically Quoth's rival at the university. He's from a very wealthy background, whereas Quoth is from a very poor background, from very humble beginnings, so they clash from the start, and Ambrose is full of animosity, full of antagonism. He's always planning to ambush Quoth. There's also a character called Devi, who at one point is referred to as Demon Devi, so she's a little bit villainous as well, and this is mainly because she has financial power over Quoth. She's a moneylender. I feel like she was a really necessary character to bring out a different side of Quoth. She brought out his vulnerability, his financial vulnerability in particular, and then there's also Quoth's love interest, Denna, who I'm not particularly a fan of. I feel like she's not really dedicated to Quoth in the long run and I'm not really sure if they're compatible. So it's a little bit weird that Quoth is constantly chasing after her. But then we have to remember that in this book he's 16, 17 years old. He's still learning about relationships and how to navigate his way through them. So perhaps Denna is a mistake and he will learn from his mistakes. In the second part of the book Quoth moves away from the university and I don't want to say too much about why that happens and how it happens because part of the entertainment factor of this book is finding out things as they happen and being shocked by them. There's one scene where Quoth is participating in a quest and he has to go into the forest to hunt down a group of bandits. At this point in the novel when Quoth was travelling to different lands outside of the university I thought the world building was really intricate and I genuinely found it fascinating to watch Quoth as he was navigating through different cultural systems and different languages. Sometimes he struggled to communicate. He comes into contact with the Arturan people and the Arturan language which uses gestures gestures, silent pauses, and it doesn't really use many facial expressions either, so it's completely different for Quoth, and he has to adapt to this new system of communicating. The Arturan people also practice the Ketan, which is kind of like a martial arts system which incorporates sword fighting. One of my favourite characters that came out of this section of the book was Tempe. I found him really endearing because initially he struggles to communicate with Quoth, and I feel like he's sometimes dismissed as being not as talented as he really is. Like, I think he is a talented character, and his relationship with Quoth, once the linguistic barriers had been broken down, was very genuine and very sincere. He basically acts as a teacher to Quoth, and I really like that dynamic between the two of them. When Quoth and Tempe are part of the group hunting down the bandits, the tension definitely builds, and I felt like the book became much more of a page turner. There was much more tension in the atmosphere as the characters were battling and being involved in all these different violent scenes. The only issue I had with these battle scenes was the way that the book was written and the structure, based on the fact that it's told from Quoth's perspective. This kind of takes away some of the suspense, because we know that Quoth survived, and no matter what happens, he's telling his story in hindsight in the present day. So we know that he gets through everything, regardless of the injuries that he picks up, we know that he will always be okay in the end. And then on the topic of having issues with Quoth, in this book, one of the things that I found more noticeable than in the first book was his age. In this book, he's 16 or 17, so he's a teenager, 
and sometimes he seems incredibly mature for his age and overly intelligent with some of the things that he comes out with. Sometimes it seemed like he was in his 20s rather than being a 16 or 17 year old but then at other times he was quite boyish and quite sexist and he definitely showed his age so a little bit all over the place and I suppose that's what it's like as a teenager. He's still figuring out who he is as a person. Having said that, the main problem that I had with Quoth in this book regarding his age issues was his relationship with Felurian when he entered into the Fae, which is the parallel universe with supernatural creatures. Felurian is this fairy, a kind of stereotypical siren, and I just didn't like the way that she was presented. Obviously everything's filtered through Quoth's perspective, so sometimes his representation of women is a little bit stereotypical. I honestly felt like this part of the book was a little bit cringeworthy and without meaning to cause any offence. It was a little bit like a fan fiction, like a really bad fan fiction. He has some very fond interactions with this woman in the middle of a forest at the age of 16 or 17. And for me that was just disturbing. I definitely think that Felurian is necessary for the plot. I think she moves it on in terms of close maturity. He loses some of his innocence and she's definitely necessary to drive things forward. But I just felt like the way it was presented and the way it panned out wasn't the best to read. And then the last issue I had with the book, I'm sorry the second half of this review is just issue, 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 was the plot progression. It was really, really slow, to be completely honest. For a book that's 1,000 pages long, it felt like not much really happened, and it could have been 100 or even 200 pages shorter than it really was. Sometimes we were going around in circles, and there wasn't really many resolutions to the questions that I had. I understand that we're following Quoth's life, and in day-to-day -day life, in real life, sometimes not much happens, and you're just kind of meandering along, and then the next minute everything happens all in one go, completely unexpectedly. So this book is kind of realistic in that respect, but in terms of the reading experience, it was just a bit irritating. It was very inconsistent. There were some days when I read like 100, 150 pages all in one go, then the next day I would read 10 pages, and I really had to battle through. Quoth is really intriguing as a character, so he kept me wanting to read and wanting to find out more about his life but I just felt like the plot progression wasn't as good. I don't think it was as well edited as the first book. In the first book, I didn't really have any problems with the plot progression. In this book, I just felt like it wasn't as polished. So with that being said, everyone, I'm gonna give The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss 3.5 stars out of five, and that is based on the fact that I didn't enjoy it as much as the first book. I gave the first book 4.5 out of 5, and I feel like this was just one point lower in terms of the enjoyment. The main problem I had was that some of the female characters were a little bit stereotyped, coming from Quoth's point of view, and also the plot was a little bit slow moving, and I feel like it could have moved on a bit quicker, but I did actually find this quite a hard one to rate. I feel like your enjoyment of this book is dependent on what you find most interesting about Quoth as a character, so for me personally, I loved learning about his childhood and his time at the university. That's my favourite part of the series. And that's basically book one and a little bit of book two. If you're more interested in Quoth's heroic adventures and his legendary status, you're probably going to prefer book two more than book one. This one actually might be a better book for certain kind of readers, so it's definitely one that I would recommend. Just be aware your enjoyment of it is probably all down to personal preference. Let me know down below in the comments if you've read The Name of the Wind or The Wise Man's fear and what you thought of them. I think it's a really interesting series and I'm definitely going to read the third book when it comes out. I have no idea when it comes out. Initially when the series was released, Patrick Croft has said he would release one book a year, which obviously hasn't happened, so no one really knows when it's going to be released, but whenever it does, I'll definitely get my hands on it. I want to learn more about Quoth. I genuinely think he's a fascinating character and I like the fact that this is basically a character study of his life. So thanks for watching everyone, and I will see you all again in my next video.